everybody online. This is uh, Luis uh, talking so here from uh, Siracha. Everything looks good on my side. So. We are having some uh, technical difficulties here with the sound. Uh, please give us a, a couple more minutes and we're going to be with you. Hanifi, can you can you confirm that you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clearly, uh, Luis. Oh, okay, okay, oh, okay. Oh, they, they didn't turn on the microphone. Uh, I'm trying out. Can you hear me? Really should be now. Like I yeah, slightly better. <laughs> slightly better. Okay, is it clear? Is it, is it clear, Hanifi? Should be good now. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> okay, that's good. Right. Should we start? So you click the slide. Yep. Hello. Hi, everyone. Yep. Uh, good afternoon and um, welcome to um, Siracha, uh, Thailand. So it's a pleasure having all of you here um, uh, at our event, uh, which we, you know, have a, a, a good lots of speakers, you know, that are going to give you a lot of insights of uh, asset in integrity management today. Um, yeah, so i um, going to kick start this uh, session uh, and today we're going to have uh, a, a list of speakers here as you can see you know from uh, our customers like PTT, uh, Thai Oil, our partners from Hexagon, MaxGrip and uh, Sphere. right? So uh, without further ado, uh, I will invite the first speaker uh, which is Luis Colorado from uh, Sonosco. Thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> Where's my applause? Thank you. Thank you guys for coming. There's a lot of people online that joined. The event will be recorded and will be shared. So I appreciate the cooperation, the partners and, uh, and the clients, PGTGC and, and Thai Oil. My part is a bit, I'm going to talk about um, a specific piece of the methodology that we have built in IMS. Yeah, it's called the degradation management framework, or sometimes we call it the corrosion management framework, or CMF, right? We love acronyms, so CMF is a tool that we have in IMS. And it's an integrated approach. It's about bringing your uh, pressure equipment integrity to a new level, right? So we always talk about integrity management, about take wall thickness measurement, corrosion, calculate corrosion and get the next inspection day. Make an inspection report, record it, approve, then you get the new schedule. But the CMF will actually work for you in, in having an interpretation of the data, right? And give you some outcome for corrosion engineers, for example. Starting just a little bit about IMS, right? So, IMS is, is a platform that will manage your asset register, of course, together with SAP. We're not, to, we're not replacing SAP, 
we are working together. So we are managing also the asset register or the uh, asset hierarchy, as we talk. Um, we do have methodology assessments, right? So RBI is a methodology. Safety instrumentation is a different methodology. RCM for pipeline, for flanges. So in IMS, we have not only for pressure equipment, but there are others. So there are a lot of methodologies that were built in, right? So the most advanced users might know that they have a CCAM, yeah, for CUI, consequence assessment model. It's a methodology. The RBI is a methodology. And the CMF, the corrosion management framework, is also a methodology that we have available. And, and the platform, the platform, when we talk about IMS platform, are the more like IT driven kind of features, right? Uh, asset information. And the platform is about uh, a dynamic, form. it's about the dashboards that you can build. Right? It's about the 3D visualizations, the drawings, right? They're not too much related to a methodology, right? And then I wanted to put in the context, when you're talking about a corrosion management framework, uh, I presented this, uh, this slide many times in other events, including Hexagon Live. It came from, from uh, two years ago. Digital maturity, what is that? The more data you have, the more digital your process, the more, uh, the, the more technical assurance and cost optimization you will achieve, right? When I'm talking about digitalization, it's exactly what Thai Oil has gone through, yeah? Recording their inspection plans, RBI, we're now going through an SAP integration with the DGC, we did the SAP integration, so it communicates. So the more integration you go, right, the more uh, embedded the software is in your process, the more mature you become digitally. So I'm just bringing that uh, on the context of CMF, right? So the CMF is all about crunching that data. So you need to use that on a regular basis. You need to create dynamic forms. You need to create checklists, right? record the wall thickness measurement, and then you let you leave the CMS to work, right? So we are looking here, uh, it's gonna be difficult if you have an Excel-based kind of inspection plan and want to use a CMS kind of methodology. You need to be digitally mature, right? And then bringing that to how do we manage integrity in IMS? We manage that through an integrity life cycle. What is that life cycle? It's about RBI. When you're talking about PI, I'm talking about that foundational elements, right? RBI and RCM analysis, right? Your baseline measurements. That's the baseline. That's the minimum you need to have to have a program like this. Then we're going to create a uh, Inspection plans, we call an equipment care plan, which is an inspection plan for a one piece of equipment. And then when you combine multiple methodologies, you can make an asset care strategy. So you can look at a, a boiler, right? Which other equipment is connected to the boiler if you have to maintain, you have to open the boiler and clean it? Oh, I can inspect my pressure relief valves. I can inspect my connected piping. I can do my flange. So that's an, uh, uh, um, that's something wrong? Is it, is it working? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. You sure? <laughs> Good. So we talk about the, uh, the asset care strategy, and then you have an execute task. When I talk about execution of a task, I'm talking about inspection. I'm talking about an IOW, right? Mapping an IOW to your RBI, recording the exceedances, right? An inspection activity, a checklist that you can apply. We configured 
checklists for uh, PTTGC, Thai oil. We've been using those checklists, those dynamic forms for a while. So we execute the tasks and CMF will be leaning on that last stage, which is learn and improve in an automated way. And how we do that, uh, 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 gonna be kidding me. I just missed one slide. Just give me one second. Don't know what happened in my presentation. Somebody was playing with it. Yeah, and then when when we drill down to uh, the CMF, so that that's the framework. Going to be more more in details on the RBI methodology. When you do an RBI assessment, the first thing you do, you assign degradation mechanisms in a corrosion loop, right? What is a corrosion loop? Is a group of equipment that have similar degradation, right? They're made of the same material. They 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 work with the same process, so they will degrade in the same way. We identify the degradation mechanisms. And how we do in the CMF, we create barriers against that degradation. How, which measures can we take to avoid that degradation from happening or identify the degradation as soon as you can, right? So implement barriers. So you can call it as a barrier management system. Uh, in the North American market, they call that, that safeguarding systems, right? But I like calling the barrier. An example of a barrier, what is the, bar the barrier against uh, um, a corrosion? Could be corrosion allowance, right? If your, corrosion, if your remaining corrosion allowance come to zero, you have zero remnant life. Yeah? Your equipment might fail at any time. A barrier can be coating, right? External corrosion, you apply coating. As long as the coating is in good condition, right? You don't have corrosion. So if you do an inspection checklist, painting degraded, the barrier will be advised and say, your barrier is no longer in good state. You have to do something. Another barrier uh, can be IOW, right? If your temperature goes above or below the exceedance, below the limit, it means your corrosion rate will change. It might reduce or might increase, right? So those are measures that you implement that you already have, right? So barriers, so you get the degradation mechanism, you can implement multiple barriers. And the trick here is the indicator, yeah? There's an indicator for that barrier. For example, if I have an IOW as a barrier and I, ha I record an exceedance, right? So I connect with the data historian. So IMS have that capability to connect with the data historian. We receive exceedances. If you go above the limit, what's going to happen with your indicator? It goes red, right? It goes red because you've been working outside the exceedance. So that will give you a different visibility on in IMS, right? Other examples can be, uh, this is a, an example of the IOW, right? But it can also be from checklists. So you apply the checklist and you make your, your indicator based on the outcome of the inspection, right? So if you go, uh, if you fill in a, a dynamic form and say, I found a coating, there's an issue with coating, as soon as that ECH, that report is approved, your indicator will change. There's a coating issue. It goes automatically to red. But if in the inspection you identify that you need a corrective action, right? So you found an issue, it's red. I have a mitigation in place, and then it becomes amber. So it means like, 
it is okay. I mean, there's a problem, but there's a mitigation in place. So it's not that bad. If that corrective action is overdue, what happens with your status? It goes to red because you have an issue, but there's not been mitigated. And he works the same with exceedances, with checklists, with corrosion allowance, remnant life, right? So if you have a remnant life zero, but you have a care, a corrective action to replace those CMLs, those piping, you're in, in a good order, right? So at the end of the day, you, you will crunch that and have a CMF, what you call CMF dashboard, yeah? What is that CMF dashboard? Yeah, it's about the outcome. So instead of looking at overdues, inspection overdues, you're going to look at the status of those barriers. So a corrosion engineer can go straight away and see, oh, I have a lot of, a lot of barriers related to IOW that are compromised. So you know where to take an action. Good? Does it make sense? The approach is a methodology that started in upstream, right? All these offshore assets and then moved into the downstream. So we adapted, we changed it, right? And then we have a system that will allow you to uh, uh, visualize the state. So you can go, there's, an IO, there's a problem here with the IOW that will show what are the related degradation mechanisms, what are the types of equipment that are affected, so you can take an action exactly where the problem is. Instead of going through reports and going through lists of process data and so on. That's what I had to say. Uh, this methodology is it's quite the way we implement it embedded in IMS as an integrated way. It's quite unique, right? It's part of, yeah, it comes from that shell methodology, from, from the shell background and the way of working. Good? If there's any questions later on, I think we're running quite uh, lean today, 15 minute presentations. Uh, but if you have any question afterwards, you get my contact, I can elaborate a little bit more. Good? Thank you. Um, now, for the next uh, presenter. Um, yeah. Where's that? So the next presenter is uh, Tanachai <laughs> from, uh, let's go to the camera, <laughs> from okay. uh, PTTGC. Yes. He got a good trainer, <laughs> so he knows everything about IMS. So, this is forward and back. Um, this is the pointer. There's no Python. Hmm? No, it, it, it's a Bluetooth. So you just... oh, okay, okay. Can we start? Is the microphone working? Yes, test. everything good. Test, test. Okay. Okay. Uh, I better to stand here. <laughs> uh, hello, hello, everyone. My name is Tanachai, uh, an inspection engineer who involved in many projects of RBI implementation and IDMS implementation at GC for 14 years, I think. Over the past two years, uh, our team has dedicated a lot of efforts to this project. Uh, and today, I'm glad to share with you our experience and what we learned from IMS implementation. Mm. Uh, let's start with. Uh, okay, Let, let's start with. <laughs> let's start with some background of PTT GC or GC. GC has a petrochemical complex in Matakut Rayong. They are one refinery and over twenty petrochemical and chemical industry and chemical plant including uh, tank farm, jetty, and interconnecting pipeline network. For RBI implementation, back in 2004, uh, we start uh, implement RBI with Shell RM software, and we transition to Gallium Synergy and 
we also have APM implemented at our refinery. Mm -hmm. uh, and in 2021, uh, we kick off a digital transformation project called the Fit Project. Mm -hmm. This project aims to lean and transform our operation in this digital world. Uh -huh. Uh, this project needs uh, a robust digital foundation platform for the future. So let's uh, take a look uh, at our current, current operation on the, on the left-hand side. You can see IDMS is just uh, a component that used for collection and RBI management, but there are many other system and many other data source that, that we have to work with as well. It looks like, look like human center, like human at the center and system is around, around him. Right? So in the right hand side, we design one system approach. This system consolidating everything into the one platform and they include seamless integration with other system and other data source. Uh, it's all about uh, streamlining the process, increasing efficiency and uh, setting up our data foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, after we have a uh, requirement, we find out the live IDMS solution. Mm -hmm. We form a holistic review team, includes all user, IT, uh, specialists, and stakeholders. And a, a key of this process is conducting an uh, in, intensive demonstration, actually with, with I think for six hours something for the, the demonstration, <laughs> to showcase how the software uh, can meet our requirement for day-to-day -day operation and have a future for, have a potential for the future also. Uh -huh. And additionally, we get uh, the user experience feedback from other company that use seeing a wireless software solution. And this is, in, that this is uh, important information for us to make a uh, decision in software selecting. Uh, by the way, finally, we have IMS. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a project management in GC. So you can see this project is corporate. This project has corporate level project organization. At the top, we have C-level and EVP as a sponsor with uh, VP of inspection and VP of uh, IT, acting as project owner and steering committee member. So for ensure the alignment, we set up the KPI and, cas and KPI was cascaded for management to working team. Uh -huh. Look into working team, we got a project lead from inspection department and IT department work together. And we have comprehensive uh, team member, not just uh, inspection, collection, and integrity, but they are IT guy, procurement, legal, HR, and stakeholder. Uh -huh. uh, moreover, there, are, there is project management team to oversee and manage uh, project progress in overall. I think with this organization, uh, it can facilitate management understanding and support for our implementation of the software. Mm -hmm. Looking into GC implementation team, uh -huh. the implementation team divide into two groups. First team focus on functionality of each module, ensure it can meet our requirement like oh, sorry, like RBI, uh, NDE management, or tank data something. So they are spec uh, that we specify the one who lead for each module. And second team 
is responsible for data preparation and management for the plan under their responsibility to ensure the data migration and data readiness on the use for IMS. Though it's, uh, it's separated by plans that they are responsible to. Mm. And during the work we do agile working at GC, we uh, we ensure a uh, we ensure a success pilot implementation implementation before rolling out to other plant. For pilot implementation, we choose our oil refinery to be a pilot plant because they. Uh, cover all equipment tie that we have to manage on IMS. They have interconnecting pipeline, have storage tank, have everything that that we want to manage. Uh, and we test the main function in pilot implementation that it can work properly and meet our requirement. And we also implement main interface with SAP for pilot plan first. Uh -huh. And also study the potential for additional function and other interface in detail before rolling out to other plant. Mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion, uh, another key thing before before proceeding data migration correctly is we have to know how IMS work before do the data migration. So that is the key thing of the data migration. And during the work, we have a, a, a shared workspace for quickly communication and feedback action between CNOSCO team and GC team, right? And we conduct a small group meeting for figure out specific issue. Just put the live person into <laughs> to solve the issue. Uh -huh. And we also have weekly meeting of the implementation team to discuss about data migration issue, uh, monitor pending issue, and uh, see what to do next, including review progress and timeline in weekly basis. So once the system has go live, we, we transition to performing all tasks within IMS, all tasks within IMS. So, so we design and standardize new work process and work instruction aligned with GC operation. I think many, uh, I think com uh, each company has your own operation way, right? Mm -hmm. And do keep monitoring the operation, getting the feedback to improve the system and, and work process on IMS. Uh -huh. Oh, now today, we successfully implemented pilot plant and in process of uh, transitioning our operation into IMS, right? And next is we have to roll out the implementation to uh, 20 plant uh -huh. this year. It includes uh, completing the interface between IMS and other other system that we require. Like Lu said, we need Pi data, we need uh, whatever data from other system. Right? This is a big challenge for us this year. Uh -huh. You can see we success pilot and have to do 20 more. <laughs> okay, after implementing pilot plan, <clears throat> we estimate the benefit from implementation. One is inspection cost saving by optimization. Uh, this includes uh, implementation of collision, sorry, collision circuit or piping circuit and interval and inspection interval extension resourcing from RBI assessment. This two, we expect uh, inspection cost saving of about 10 million baht per year for just refinery plant. Uh, and another one is man hour saving. Just by streamlining the process and utilizing IMF functionality. This include uh, improvement in monitoring dashboards, task 
task grouping scheduling field execution with mobile device uh, direct reporting to the software uh, data input and analysis uh, in the software and we got end to end visibility through the software uh, this we expect uh, total man hour saving of around 500 hours per year also this is the uh, estimate benefit for pilot plan that we have uh, we already success uh, let's wrap up with key factor that contribute to a successful implementation uh, first one uh, define your need you must understand your requirement and business need and then uh, invest the time and effort to find the right IDMS solution to fit you, right? Second is corporate level project organization. This will facilitate management understanding and support during implementation process. This is so important, right? Uh, and we have effective uh, and we have effective and dedicated working team also. We use agile working on the process and uh, number five pilot implementation conduct any issue uh, to ensure you will have smooth low out to auto plan and the last one just keep monitoring of operation getting the feedback uh, it is the key for continuously improve the new process on the IMS so uh, with this key factor, I believe we we can achieve a, a successful implementation of IMS for AutoPan in this year. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My microphone. Thank you. It's uh, it was really good to uh, no no, no oh, okay. that, that's a punk here. Thank you. It's really good to see uh, the whole implementation of uh, PTTGC. I was involved on that uh, since the very beginning, and it's really good to see that uh, you know proceeding and taking format. Like you said that we had at one point like a, a six hours demo where they had a bunch of people in their, in the online. It was during COVID. And they were shooting questions nonstop. But how you do this? How you do that? How you do this? How you do that? And I think was knowing the capabilities was quite important at that point. Thank you. Thank you for bringing. Now, one of our most, I would I like to refer Thai Oil as one of our uh, most mature IMS users that really squeeze the features and the functions of IMS every time. Yeah, you get the Ponkit. Uh, asking more and more and the whole team you know making sure that you're using all the functionalities to you hope i didn't break it i need to put this no. already or what? oh you already put it i already put it i just needed some time thank you Good work. okay uh good morning oh sorry good afternoon everyone my name is home get yeah, I've been working for Thai Oil for like five years and a half. Today, I'm going to present about our integrity management platform. So to begin with, let, let's discuss about the background. Actually, in the past, from Thai Oil, we have so many data sources which is unsynchronized. For example, the inspection history, the collection management, and also uh, the work schedule as well. So. Let's, let's think about it. If, if they, all, all the data are unsynchronized, when we have to issue the work scope to the maintenance, it will be unavailable. It, it will, will be impossible. So sometimes we could make it lack of work scope and then make it make a LOPC. So that is the issue right now. So the solution is to make every single data to be in one single platform. And yes, we use IMS PI. Yeah. 
And the key feature by using IMS CI, we have to, uh, one is the inspection data management. By having the IMS CI, we can manage to do digitalized RBI. And also we can create our own report, our own schedule. We can make the inspection and test plan really easily. And also we can make the CAD schedule. And after getting everything, we have to create our own dashboard to track the KPI, individual KPI. And one more thing about the IMS, we have the power of the QLE. We can consolidate all the data that we would like to make to have to integrate with some other platform. And there may be some project and we just do the QLE, our own QLE, no need support from Xenosco. Yeah, ourselves. And another point is about the collation analytics. This, one, this is one of the good features. We can have the collation data and then we just leave with the data really easily. We can have the statistical analysis as well by using the IDA one. And another point is the EVA. This one, we would like to use the EVA because uh, for the heat exchanger tool inspection, it's very difficult to, to consolidate all of the inspection record. We just sampling some of the tool inspection by using the eyelids, and then we're using the prediction to predict all the overall of the heat exchanger tool. That I will discuss later. So in the past, as I mentioned earlier, before 2019, everything are unsynchronized. When we have to do the RBI analysis, we use RM. When we have to use the inspection scheduling, we just use uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Office page, which is very difficult to consolidate everything into one. So after 2020, I, we, I just bought the IMS PI, and then we study, we study with Louis actually, just for five days, and then we, we realized that this is one of the key that we can solve all of the things. So by using the IMS PEI, RBI analysis is available because actually the difficulty for the RBI analysis, we have to consolidate everything. For example, the inspection history, if the data source of the inspection history is outside the RBI, it's very difficult to update the next inspection date. And also the collection data as well. Okay, let's discuss about it in more detail. The first one, I'm gonna discuss about how we have the inspection data management. As I mentioned earlier, we have one single platform, which is the IMS. We can perform the RBI study. After we get the result of the RBI study, we just create our own inspection task. This is some example. In high oil, we have like five companies inside the high oil. We manage to bring everything every single asset into one, one platform. And you can see that our equipment is about 170,000 records right now. And you can see that actually in Thai oil, we have some special modeling campaign. For example, we, have, we create our own uh, NRV campaign. We create our own dead lake campaign. We also include everything into the IMS PI as well. This is also one of the examples. Imagine when there is a turnaround activity, we have to consolidate every single schedule into one, into one system. And yes, in IMS we can do it. We create our own pan event, we call it the, the turnaround in 2023. We bring all of the schedule, 32 schedule, that includes inspection, cash schedule, and also the collection modeling, that's all available in one platform. If you have everything period to shut down, you just make the inspection activity on stream. So at that time, we observed the COI issue before shutdown. And yes, we just do the repair during the shutdown. Yeah, that, that's very good. And the next one, uh, because of the power of the inspection schedule, we can create our own inspection and test plan, as I mentioned. You can see that we plan to do PT, UT, visual together with the mapping. So this is really easy and with this, and it's and really handy. So actually we can make the job even faster comparing to the manual one, about 60% that we can save. Yeah, that's quite really good. And another one about the integrity management, as I mentioned, we have to create the dashboard to track the KPI. So one of the things is about the approval. We have to approve actually for the inspection history, we have to get someone that have authorization to approve. And another point is about the schedule. When we issue cash schedule, there's gonna be someone to approve actually. And another point is about the individual KPI of the inspector. Actually, me as an inspection engineer, I have to manage the schedule, for example, the inspection schedule. I have to see how many tasks that I have to do in this year, next year, next month, something like that. 
So that's all available by our own dashboard. This is our own dashboard. Yeah, we can create own dashboard. It's, it's, it's like our idea. And this is what we do this year, actually. This is a dynamic form that we, I just joined a user meeting with Louis, and I observed, oh, this is a big feature, the dynamic form one. And I think, I'm, actually, I'm impressed with the feature because let's, let's think about it. This is a manual one, the inspection report. Actually, this one is good. We can see all the data in the report, but how about we think about, we have, we would like to learn about the pen. We would like to understand what are the things, I mean the degradation in the pen. So this is just one report. Let's think, think about we have too many data in the pen. So let, let's think that we bring all of the data. Like we, in, the, in all the report, we have finding inspection, we have engineering work done, right? So for example, if you observe cracking in the shell, in the well of the shell, how about you just consolidate all of the equipment lead that have crack issue in the shell. And then you can see, okay, our pen have some issue with the crack already. Like the hick and so hick, something like that. Your synonymic form is available. You can create your own form checklist. And that checklist, the data in the checklist, you just export to the Excel sheet and then you can get the data. So if you have too much equipment, let's say around 100,000, you export everything in one Excel sheet, and then you can see how many equipment have the issue. Yeah, that's it, the dynamic form. Right now, Thai Oil create our own dynamic form for three, for three things. One is the inspection report, and another one is our inspection and test plan. We have the new inspection and test plan right now, and the last one is the care. Okay, the first one, as I mentioned in the report, the normal report, we should have the finding, the work done, and recommendation. So you can consolidate how many equipment having some issue with crack. You can consolidate how, how many equipment have to repair in some section that available in dynamic form. This is the example that, that, the, that we already use in Thai oil. The next one is our own inspection and test plan. This is very, very handy actually because if you think about how many equipment have to do eyelids, that's available. If you think about how many equipment have to erect the scaffolding, that's also available. And about the talking, also available, and inspection history as well. That's all available in our ITP, inspection and test plan. The last one is care. The care, as, as you may know, the care we always make the recommendation to maintenance team. And another point, uh, because when, when we have to issue some activity to maintenance team, it will give with the priority how, 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 how long that we have to take the job within time. So by using some logic, some calculation in dynamic form, dynamic form is available to do the calculation. We can calculate corrosion rate, limiting life, and then we make some logic with that. With the limiting light, low limiting light can make the priority like three months, six months, like that. We have the logic in dynamic form as well. It's just like some simple coding in dynamic form. This is the example. We export the Excel sheet and then we see, for example, uh, the NDE method for ultrasonic. If the checklist is one, it means this equipment has to do ultrasonic. That's the power of the dynamic form. Okay? Uh, the last topic is about the uh, corrosion analytics that we already utilize. Uh, we do for the data analysis, I mean the corrosion data analysis, we use IDAP. And for the two exchanger analysis, we use EVA. The EVA is, as I mentioned, we can just sampling the sample of the two, for example, 30 two by using iris. Then we do the analysis to predict the, the overall corrosion rate, overall minimum thickness that can observe in the in the in this heat exchanger tool, and then we do the calculation. Yeah. Yeah, the left hand side, as you can see, uh, actually, this is one of the real pain in our pen, uh, the corrosion monitoring, because too much uncertainty, because of some anomaly. So sometimes you do do perform inspection, you get that interval, which is today. You, you try to 
to try to complete the schedule, but schedule always make it overdue because of this, this issue. So actually, when you get the inspection result, you have to review it. And we can do it by using SIDAP very easily. You can see that how many equipment have to do re-inspection. So after you complete the inspection, the next inspection date will be like three or six years, something like that. So we will get rid of all of the overdue schedule by using SIDAP. And the last one is the EVA. As I mentioned, this is the, the statistical analysis together with the data analysis. So you can see what are the, what are the, uh, the, the metal lot for, for each uh, percent confidence rating like that. So this is also compiled as may PCC2 to do some, to do some analysis. Okay, this is a shortcut. Uh, as I mentioned about the collection schedule reviewing, because we have to review all of the data and we can get rid of all of the unnecessary collection schedule. So in 2023, about 1,000 collection schedule that we can get rid of them. So there is no need to do inspection for that 1,000. And this is cost saving really high. About, actually about 1 million baht, like that. And because of, uh, because of the, the way that we can do in IMS very really good, right? So we have to create our own procedure as well to compile everything in IMS. Yeah, that's also our own procedure that we just issue this year. Okay, in conclusion, because of everything, we can do optimization, we can get rid of the LOVC. So we can make some benefit about 40 million baht per year. That, that, that's quite a lot, right? Because of that as I mentioned. And because of one single platform that we have, this is kind of bit tech teeth in Thailand. Yeah, that's all from my side. And oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, last year, I, I, went, I went to PDT of a contest and we just do this project to, to one go award. Yeah, that's all. Good, is it working in the microphone? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was amazing, huh? Like, uh, always happy to see when the client and the users are excited and show excitement in releasing a new feature and Ponke jump on it and, uh, you know, reach out to us and say, how to use it? I want to use more. It's, so for me, it's really comforting. And also being part of early implementation during training and see everything being done. I'm very happy with that. Thank you again, you too. Uh, we go for a 15-minute break. Right? Let's get a coffee outside uh, for the online people. Yeah, uh, Come back in 15 minutes. You go for a coffee. Okay. Thank you.
This. Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> okay. Is the green button? Is it light green? Uh, green. Yeah, light screen. Right. Good. Um, now we're gonna go for um, a few presentations from uh, from partners of Senosco. So since a few years, uh, we start to enhance our partner ecosystem, right? So we have Asphere here in Thailand that can provide you some mobile devices, some local capabilities. We have a partner, a technology partner with Hexagon that uh, allows us to integrate with their digital solutions, like a digital twin. And we're gonna have Max Grip, who is an, uh, a more like an engineering partner that can help us to implement our studies, for example, in the field. Good. Right. Good to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I should be using this, right? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Sawadee hap. Pumche misli hap. Wala ni putai mekeng lah. Kapan lah COVID ni mai. So. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm Miswari. I look after Southeast Asia uh, for PAS, uh, basically on the uh, operation and management side, right? So I believe you guys are from most of it uh, OPEX or operation and maintenance side, right? Okay. The online people, just raise your hand if you're not using. Okay, so yeah, Luis shared. Uh, the whole what we call it asset integrity life cycle, right? How you do your you know technical assurance and all those cost optimi uh, cost optimization optimization loops. Sorry. So let's bring go below to the what we call it the contextualized data that you need, right? So if be bear in mind this is the very important data that you need to connect. Right, so we have SDX, one of, but these are just at the end of the day when you go back after you heard me or listen to it. These are the things that you need to go back and look into it. What are you connecting now? Is it good enough? The in data integrity has been managed or not being managed, right? So there's always a missing part there, right? right? So uh, if you see this, so we're known for this uh, SDX is a platforms and in in modular, right? So SDX start from the what we call it the capital project, where you put your smart 3D plan designs, all those uh, you know the the management part of it, approvals and everything. So you bring those EDMS and get it along to the operational side, because most of it that's where the what we call it the the losing end when project done, wash their hand, operation up to you right so there was no what i call data flow coming in from the project capitals so the xdx if you look into the ims context xdx is the one that bringing all the information around your operation and maintenance and around your capex and if you want to do re-engineering back again so part the most the important part is the integrity management which is run by the ims Right? So this is where you need to connect and to make sure that it's been automated. If it's going to be a manual, it's going to be, you know, until, uh, you know, cows come home, you can never settle. Just take examples. You need to settle this corrosion in op operating window and everything. Look at the, you know, your, your degradation, your reliability and integrity. And then someone do a plan changes, change your engineering unit in the field because they say I need to or at least the bypass or they basically not taking it or change it engineering from PSI to bar and he's from process not from your side he's from the process control guy want to do it want to test something and he change it how is going to affect if someone change your PSI to bar to all your chain of data Pi will know your production allocation will know. Your process value do it know that actually your range has been changed. Your IMS, IOW, all data integrity has been basically compromised. So if you don't have this, you know, so you need to have this what we call like the SDX platform that connect everything else, right? 
So very heavy slides from project. So you have all these, uh, you know, workflow documentation, you know, document control from the project side, bring it to basically on the operation side. Then you have a lot of other, all these uh, components to it. So let's, you know, you, you know what, what is it all about, right? So it's, it's part of your day-to-day -day things, right? So what is in that XDX or what are the main component that you need to basically take into consideration the most important part? So what we call it as a, a digital backbone, right? So a backbone that where you basically need to connect. So there's actually a few other things that only that you need to take consideration and probably you are not connecting now. The rest you might have connected. You might have connect to your document control, operational data, uh, sorry, the data, the operational logbooks and everything, but are you connecting to a configuration file of uh, your control system? Are you connecting to all the events, operator action journal, alarms and events, your system, system journal, which is like the IO card change, you know, or someone interrupt you, the data flow, are you connected to that? So that's the main question. So if someone change means that the whole data integrity flow will be, but I remind it, remind you again. So a digital data backbone is supposed to be an orchestra and automated saying that your data is not correct. Your pie is not getting it. If you have IOW, you're not getting the right data because someone changed it. And this is, we're talking about Thai oil refineries. Right? So Thai oil refineries, one of the example, you have some of the backbone. TOP use and automation integrity, which is connect to the configuration file from the current one until the project. one, And that is actually part of the SDX of the hexagon, right? So the realizing, so everybody talk about digital twin. What is digital twin? Anyone? What is digital twin? SCG have their own digital twin team, right? So it's actually a reflecting what is in the real world, what has been captured, what has been measured in your real plan and put it into context for you to work at, you know, simulate it to make sure that you run in process and safety and all those things. So all those components, right? So in an aeroplane, in avionics, the digital twin has been there. They don't call it a digital before. Before you flew the aeroplane, you need to make sure your trust, engine, design, everything is good. You simulate it, you go up. Because if you don't do that, if you fail, data integrity issue, your temperature is saying 400 degrees Celsius, but you're actually at 800 degrees Celsius, meaning your engine is going down, plane crash, people die. You assimilate not to the real things, so you need to learn. Plan, tie oil, finally, your safety system will basically take over. So, okay, nobody die, as long as it's trips, right? Okay, 15 minutes. So, what do you need to look at? before you go into you know, the smart digitality or the part of the SDX, before you go into the rest of the enterprise digital, you see dashboard, you click at the dashboard, production throughput, 125,000 barrel. You click down to 125,000 barrel, okay, five minutes. So what is the component behind it that basically gonna jeopardize that? Your cost and everything, right? So Digitalize all your human operation, process and procedure. So all your that your operation and everything, you need to digitalize. This is the first thing that you need to do before you start talking about digital twin. So most of uh, you guys have it. You might have some, uh, you know, your own uh, in-house tools. All those proven outcomes, right? Key benefit. Second, connect your operational data. Means like this is all your data design engineering from the for using of the operation and maintenance so what are the operation maintenance data that you need to look at safety operating limit your alarm and event alarm settings all the design and engineering data your bypass management your trip function all that make sure that you connect that so you don't connect that don't talk about digital twin again right so and the interoperability now you need to connect to the live data which is control system PV values, you need to connect to make sure that configuration finds that. Then you start to be interoperability with your data, design, engineering, and the rest of the operational, the first, the first page, right? So the operational data, right? Automation integrity, 
you make to get to make sure your data integrity has been managed in the whole chain of process. So how you do it? You cannot do it manually. You need a system, you need tools to alert you saying that someone change. A configuration management and inventory management of your whole system, right? Then you build, maintain and evolve with the twin. So that is part. So the vision is I give you, okay, if you're in operation, you are process engineer, maintenance, your instrument, mechanical, all that, actually looking at almost the same data. Your process safety guy. So you have a control guy, process control, you have safety, part of the process operation probably an uh, integrity guy there, maintenance guy, engineering, if you want to do plan changes. and So everyone is actually having their own document. So why not bring it together? All your disparate because it's actually all the same document when you operate and maintain. Process people have their own. So these are all the disparate and you need to centralize it and connect it to the operational data and configuration file. If you don't do that, it's still a lot of gaps. It's still a, not a digital or whatever. At least we call it electronic, electronize your documents, right? So now you see the real world, now you see the digital twin because you centralize it, it's checking. So it would, you don't have to worry about data, you have to worry about the real job of an engineer. Analyze, you know, maintain it, and find an enhancement to it, right? So, yeah, so part of it, the Sinesco, all that, you know, problem and you have. So this is part of the SDX that enable that we basically keep together to maintain part of it. The most important is the integrity, eh? reliability and integrity management, right? So the SDX fit in the middle and data flow through and we check against what has been changes and all the document control. So, yeah, multiple system of record connected and contextualized with each other. Yeah, so basically, timing is okay. All right, so any question? These are all the you know green highlight. You know. So, what am I? Yep, so I hope you get those gist. I have 50 minutes just to tell you, you go back and just think what are the things that I do. Are you actually doing your work? really manual and basically depending on a lot of other people because of your incorrect data right so go back and ask your digital team hey you know i need to know my iuw integrity you know is it like someone change you know like are we, what are we connecting is it someone that key in right so yep thank you very much okay thank you thank you Thank you for the right. for the presentation. Good one. Um, now we're gonna have. Um, I'm gonna stop the the broadcasting here from uh, from Siracha, and I'm gonna bring um, Honey Fee from Max Grip. Uh, Max Grip, just for for the record, is uh, is uh, one of our partners that do the engineering part of IMS. So they, they go on site and they conduct uh, facilitation workshops for RBI studies. So they have a team in Malaysia with integrity engineer, RBI engineers, corrosion engineers to help our clients to implement a methodology. So yeah, if you have, a, oh, I need to implement an RCM study, you bring like Max Grip to help you to implement, of course, using IMS. Max Grip is also a Dutch company right? That has a lot of experience with IMS and with Shell. So Hanifi, are you, are you ready? I hope he's ready. Yeah, yeah, Louis. Yeah, yeah okay. So turn on your camera and I'm going to mute yeah. myself. Yeah. And uh, you, 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 you record the screen, uh, your, uh, share your screen. Yeah, can you see me now? Can you hear me clearly? Uh, okay. really? Yeah, we can see you and hear you. Great. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, thank, uh, thank you for the introduction, Luis. Uh, yes, uh, we have announced a formal strategy partnership between uh, Sino Schools, uh, Mass Grip. Albeit it's still new, uh, still adjusting to these uh, schemes of things, you know, but we are truly honored uh, with the news and uh, especially to feature in today's Sino School seminar. So I've, I've uh, uh, taken my time to look at the, all presenters, previous uh, presenters, 
uh, slides uh, and presentation, I think it's quite technical. For today, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, give just an intro, introductory session, uh, just uh, on the lighter side of, of, uh, of this session. Right? So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mohamed Hanifi Ben Zakaria. Uh, I'm a senior integrity engineer with Grid Malaysia. I'm very happy. I'm very proud to appear before you guys today. Uh, to share a little bit of stories about Mass Grip. And uh, with that, I, I would like to thank uh, the good people of Sino Schools uh, for giving me the opportunity, uh, for giving us the opportunity to feature in today's seminar. Uh, it's unfortunate uh, that I'm not able to join you physically in Thailand, but here I am uh, from behind my desk, you know, joining you guys uh, virtually all the way from Kuala Lumpur. Uh, oh, yeah, before I go any further, uh, let me make my statement of intent. Uh, so today, I would like to uh, present a real case study from our uh, previous project on the long-lasting impact that we have uh, contributed for our client by enabling this uh, software adoption mindset. And we turn it into a, a, as a service, you know. So uh, let's have a look. All right. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, just bear with me for a while. Yeah. Okay. So, but before before I go any further, uh, let me introduce uh, about Mass Grip, uh, especially for those who never heard of us previously. Well, I mean, uh, that's okay. Uh, this would be a good opportunity for also for us to introduce our company, right? So at MassGrip, uh, we are an independent consultancy and engineering firm that's grown hand in hand with the very industries that all of you as the industry players has helped to advance uh, day by day. So uh, before I move on to the second point, I really want to elaborate more on why we, MaxGrip, claim ourselves as being independent. Yeah. So indeed, we are independent because uh, just like the title of this presentation, Enabling Software Adoption, our solution comes always in the forms of uh, implementation services, engineering implementation services uh, that help to unlock the maximum potential of the software solution that our clients uh, decide to adopt for the organization. So. As you can see in the uh, logos on the top of my slide, uh, it's not by chance that Max Grip stand within the Vedantic's green quadrant as the innovator in uh, 2024, uh, this year. So this, this, the, this distinction basically echoes our implementation service expertise because uh, according to Vedantic's industry analysts, uh, there's two factors that uh, currently uh, been looking at in, in the industries within the industries, which, is, which are the operational efficiency uh, prioritization, op operational efficiency prioritization, and then uh, coupled with uh, complexity of IAM technologies uh, installation nowadays. Yeah, So that this, these two factors highlights uh, critical needs for specialized expertise to help uh, harmonize uh, these two factors. And this is true. And uh, based on this example shown earlier, uh, I'm sure that you have seen it. You have seen it. The, the way a poorly implemented system can cause a significant loss uh, opportunity to daily operation. It's quite frustrating, isn't it? Uh, so I, I, share, I share a second uh, opinion that's been shared by Mr. Miswari uh, just now. So we, we really understand that. Uh, that's why our approach uh, is different. So we respect uh, the choices that our client or you make in terms of uh, software or system of your choice, uh, because it's not about uh, because it's about fitting your needs, you know, uh, in your journey for digitalization, for digital twin, what and whatnot, and not the other way around. Okay, so moving on to the second point. Sorry, so we specializing in asset performance management. We have uh, dedicated over twenty seven years to nurturing global industries assets and operation to run smoothly and effectively. So our expertise uh, spans from uh, uh, fast, from FMCG uh, to, to sectors involving complex networks and systems, uh, such as oil and gas, uh, chemicals, infrastructures, uh, power utilities, and manufacturing industry. 
So the way that we look at it, there are not just industrial sectors, right? There are ecosystems where uh, safety, reliability, accuracy, and efficiency are critical in these uh, uh, ecosystems. So as we navigate this journey, our path crosses with uh, many distinguished names, our clients. So companies like uh, the one you see on the right of my slide, so these are not just uh, logos on this slide. You know, they are our partners in pursuit of uh, excellence. Uh, that's the narrative of our collective success. And then our people, our consultants, are the real specialists here. They are change makers who merge technical expertise with uh, the finesse of uh, organizational uh, transformation. So that's another way of saying that uh, we're not just observers of change. We are the facilitators, uh, enabling you to meet uh, your demands of tomorrow, we, and we can do it today. <laughs> so as we progress uh, through this uh, content of my seminar, next we'll uh, showcase our services, our set integrity related, as well as of uh, maintenance and reliability related projects and the tangible results that we have achieved. So let's move on. Uh, so b before before that, uh, uh, we take a look at the projects. Uh, let's take a look at the service that we offered. You know, uh, you can see there's uh, uh, different confi configuration of uh, top. There's uh, 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 top blocks and uh, the the bottom blocks here, and the the, the, the top block is started with uh, maintenance and reliability engineering services that we offer. So we also provide uh, practical help uh, on site uh, and in your team. Uh, to perform and implement projects such as uh, preventive maintenance, scheduling, uh, equipment reliability studies, uh, maintenance strategy development and optimization, um, uh, M-plan, RCM planning, uh, asset condition monitoring, predictive uh, maintenance deployment, you name it. So we can also help with uh, rationalizing uh, PM or correct, uh, preventive maintenance and corrective maintenance ratios. We coach and train staff. Uh, we can fix the basics and uh, improve systems and data quality as well. And we also have uh, experience uh, with improving uh, staff competencies, roles and responsibilities and, uh, you know, implementations of APM processes. Uh, for EAM, uh, we also do EAM, EPM consulting. So we, this is uh, the, the area which we pride ourselves on our experience in EAM and uh, APM. So it, that that's are the lifelines of our industries, right? So, or at least uh, the direction that we're going. So we have a global track record of EM system uh, blueprints, builds, uh, and uh, implementations uh, like an IBM Maximo, uh, Infor, EAM, SAP, PM, and more systems. So this includes uh, providing trainings, coaching, uh, KPI setup, improvements, and remediations. And uh, apart from that, you know, like... Um, uh, we, we also uh, per perform asset management improvement. Uh, that being said, we help with uh, getting the job done and we believe in managing change, uh, not just uh, enduring it uh, because change is tough. Uh, I get that. And, and it's why so many uh, transformation or many initiatives that want to be initiated by a company's uh, industry organization just fail uh, So because they don't consider the human element the engineers, the managers, the people on the ground. Uh, but we can support with the managing change. For example, after we did uh, a set improvement mapping, uh, a set improvement uh, development and review, we can deliver our staff to help you with realizing our or continuing the improved way of working. So uh, uh, we uh, transition to the bottom blocks, uh, the three bottom blocks here. Uh, basically, on the category of uh, integrity assurance, now we, we uh, help within the boundaries <clears throat> as set by uh, regulatory requirements and your own internal policies to introduce and apply initiative. So, that you, as you know, there's a uh, lots of integrity assurance in it, initiatives uh, which we have uh, helped to implement, like a client uh, with client system environment, like uh, set integrity management system implementations, um, RBI, uh, CMP, uh, uh, you know, to name a few. And we also do uh, for for you uh, who have a matured field, uh, asset life extension. Uh, and then 
just to name a few. So these are all to help with uh, optimizing asset uh, integrity assurance, uh, following the Plan Do Check Act uh, uh, framework. So it is our aim to help our client to navigate between uh, prevention of unplanned, unplanned downtime and production loss, as well as prevention against escalation towards uh, major accidental hazard. Apart from that, uh, we, we, we do digital dis uh, transformation strategy, uh, industry 4.0 deployment and adoption. So uh, as you can see in the slide uh, here, um, sorry, okay, let's, let's stay with this uh, slide. Uh, all right, before I start uh, with this section, I need to make a disclaimer here, as well as a reminder to myself, because uh, that I cannot reveal the name of the client which we have done our project with in the past. But hey, uh, Shinosko, they didn't say we cannot describe uh, who we are working with. So uh, in this first case, we have a, a work together with our host of this seminar here. Uh, the name is Confidential uh, in America. So uh, this is uh, for the super major Caribbean site uh, in America for the RCM studies. So the results, you know, uh, there's two tangible results here, which, is, which are the 2.3 million uh, USD yearly saves, as well as uh, um, uh, man hours, uh, man hours reduction, uh, uh, 50,000 uh, USD yearly. And then in the next case that we have also uh, with regards to the implementation of RCM. So, you know, my boss asked me to zip my mouth, particularly on this one, because uh, it's owned by a company coming from his country in the Netherlands. So, uh, you know, the orange colored massive floating LNG fleet in the west coast of Australia. So nobody's going to know which uh, client I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, but OK, so the project is still ongoing, but uh, there is a case of, uh, of loading arms, uh, downtime. Uh, so uh, as we Im improve their way of working and eventually increase the reliability and uh, availability of the of loading arms. So that decreased the manpower by uh, 10 to 15 percent, which means less people working in a high risk environment. So our RCM approach uh, was taken, of course. And the next uh, our case, uh, the next uh, case is on the, you know, but I can say on this one because I directly involved with it. So there's a massive downstream GTL plan in Qatar. So it's a mission critical task uh, that involve uh, risk-based inspection revalidation. So the situation was that the case uh, of which RBI was not revalidated and not strategized to align with their turnaround cycle. So they feel that they are not in control of the results. So uh, and then uh, the, you know there's a case of interdepartment inter not working that are working in silos and the risk of facilities that are not updated. So we took uh, an uh, RBI approach and according to the client methodology, uh, that resulted in a cost of leak prevention save of uh, 1.7 USD a million USD per event. Uh, because the total production of that facility is 8.4 million USD per train per day. So it's a high capital intensive facility. So we, we, we basically strategize uh, alignment with the TA cycle and the RBI got uh, internally audited and, safe, and it's a result in safeguarding their license to operate in the country. So I think, uh, yeah, uh, if that's all right, uh, that's, that's all for, for, for my presentation uh, for today. Uh, thanks for listening to, to, to us. Uh, if you have any uh, uh, question and uh, question, uh, please uh, feel free to ask. So yeah. So thank you, uh, thank you, Hanifi. Can you can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Can 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 you hear me? Yeah. Still. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Still, yeah thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Hanifi, for for joining the presentation. Um, I think there was uh, there were great examples on how a good implementation can give a clear benefits to the users, right? So Hanifi is a good IMS user. So he's been implementing, running RBI workshops, optimizations. So when you did your uh, corrosion schedules optimization, that's what they can also help, right? So if you get the knowledge, but if you don't get the resources, he can provide temporary resources. Thank you, Hanifi. If there's any question, I think we're gonna direct the questions back to you. Um, and then to, uh, to uh, uh, close the day, uh, bringing um, our colleagues from us here, they are local, they're, so they are Thai. Um, we've been focusing the, uh, the partnership on the, they have capabilities to bring in 
like mobile devices, like Atex proof. It is the future to bring IMS to the field, right? So um, at the beginning of IMS, it was more uh, um, um, an engineering tool. So you do calculations, you do predictions, and then we're moving more and more towards a field execution. Can you go to the field with any mobile device? No, you need the Atex proof. You need the, yeah, you need. And uh, they also help with local resources for uh, implementation, some of the data migration, some of these services. So Samita, you got the microphone? Yes. All right. Okay. 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 Good afternoon, everyone. I am from uh, SVR company. My name is Samita. I'm area sales exclusive, taking care of all the customers in Thailand. We are local partner of Senosco, also the ATEC mobile called ISAF brand as well. I also have ISAF manager with me today, Kun Ing. So we are really local partner of ISAF. As everyone already used Senosco here, so everyone already know how to use this solution, but we want to be above. So we want to take you to another zone, like we want to show you about IMS Fulfill. This is a bouncer that you can use on the tablet, but the most exclusive one is you can use it offline. Of course, in your company, not every zone have Wi-Fi or network. So this IMS Fulfill is going to help you work in the area that don't have network. So simple, you can go create schedule in IMS or your SAP, plan and ensure is it ready to work. Then you go for assign schedule for responsible person in IMS. And you can do it on the tablet as well. You can open IMS Fulfill, select your schedule as you normally working on your PC in the operation room. But in this case, we're going to work in the tablet instead. And as you go, with, when the schedule is ready, you can take the schedule and go to the offline field. Do, our, do your own inspection plan. Whatever you want to do on it, you can go around your factory, do all the inspection work in the schedule that is offline. When you get back in the zone that you connect with the network or Wi-Fi, that schedule will back on the IMS for film bouncer and also can link back to your own SAP as well. So this is how it looks like on our tablet as you see here. This is the tablet of iSafe. It's come with eight inches screen and soonly in Q3, we're gonna launch out the 5G tablet with 10 inches screen as well. So this is how it looks like. You can create your own schedule on the tablet, can make it offline, can add more schedule, same like you do in operation room, but this one is easier because you can do on the tablet, can walk around with it, not just have to sit at your desk. This is the mainly we want to present you that the inspection don't have to be just on the operation room or on your table. It can walking around and do it together, even without connect with the network as well. And another one that I would like to show you about the inspection work is our realware. As its name, realware is real time. Everyone gonna see the same picture as our expert. When you walk on the field, our expert can see everything through the display in front that you see at this boom arm and can go sign into the team or any application that company has to link it the operation room with the expert. In this day, you no need to send everyone on the field to do the inspections because this 
hardware can help you with that. They can also taking pictures, taking videos, also can record it, can go to Zoom. Even this day, we even have the translate application as well. So it's gonna help you beyond the communicate. You no need just to communicate to just local people. You can speak in English and make it translate to other languages as well with this device. But at least today we have just less amount of time. If any of you have more questions about our meter, our tablet, or real where we can go in to implement for you or do the day more for you in the next day. So thank you very much for today. Thank you, Samita. I think it's um, you can imagine that application as you're going to have your dynamic form, for example, the dynamic form and the inspection procedure or an acceptance criteria being presented on your, on, your, on your eyes can help perform that inspection. If you're doing a flange management, right, if you do a, a maintenance on the flange, you can get the guided protocol on the screen while you're doing the work. So it's quite a handy to perform inspection. So uh, together with IMS for Field, I think it can, uh, can add quite some value. Thank of you, course. guys. Thank you for today. Thank you. Um, thank you all for coming here today. Uh, we we uh, completed the, uh, the topics we wanted to present. We're going to have some drinks after, just uh, some close-up from Patrick. Yeah. So th thank you very much, everyone, uh, for coming. And um, um, before, you know, we end the session, is there any questions, you know, regarding all the uh you know the, the topics that we have been discussing uh if there is you know please feel free to you know email to us or if you want to to have a such uh you know have, have a, a a quick questions here you know uh louis is also here to to answer it uh if not you can always send to the questions to us right uh we have um after this session you know we actually have a drinking session downstairs at the lobby uh, uh at the bar area so uh, please feel free to join us, you know, for, for a networking session. Yeah, so um, I'm Patrick. So uh, I lead the business for Sonosco in Asia Pacific. So feel free to contact me, you know, should you have um, any questions. Yeah, Th thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for the audience online. Uh, recording will be available soon. Thank you. Thank you, bye.